Good morning, folks. This is exactly what the sun looked like in late 2009 when the sunspot minimum was ending and cycle 24 was kicking in. Top news of the day begins with our star at spaceweathernews.com and folks, we've got a coronal hole entering Earth-facing longitudes. Its solar wind will arrive in about two or three days. For now, the previous amplified solar wind stream is waning back. Plasma pressure dropping in geospace and geomagnetic conditions returning to quiet. But that coronal hole also kicks off an interesting two weeks of seismic risk. The interplanetary fields of this solidly transequatorial coronal hole will link up with our planet before the weekend. While that is ongoing, we're on the verge of numerous planetary geometries of significance. From Saturn inward in a cluster here, we are just a couple of days away from the solar Jovian opposition, Earth coming between. There are conjunctions in the other inner planets over this time, ending with the Saturnian opposition on the 21st, my favorite day of the year. We've covered about a dozen papers over the years confirming these correlations statistically, and we've got an entire playlist where you can learn more about why the planets and the sun are intimately linked and get clues on the earthquake connection as well. Of course, over the coming days, the blood echoes and atmospheric pre-seismic signals will be important indicators of where that seismic risk is highest, Track them at QuakeWatch.net. Quick note on the weather coming tonight. The core of the low sits north of the border, but the worst of this is going to hit the central and midwest states. Eyes on your forecast tonight. Some quick notes on interesting articles, starting with a posting in defense of farmers. You know, agriculture takes a lot of blame in the climate game. I love how nobody tries to stop selling nitrous to street racers whose pre-race purges out to farms for 100 miles, however. Here, we're looking at whether or not the blame on agriculture is warranted. Hint, it's not. Up next, they're taking the Nova Extinction concept we've recently seen and are applying it over 300 million years ago to one of the great dyings on this planet. Not surprisingly for those who know the solar micronova isotope arguments, they are looking for some of the remnants of the transuranic elements we've seen examined for the more recent events. Up next is one of the most important truths of the solar system, and we seem to have to come back to it over and over again. There is no planet 9, or no planet 10 for those of us who still hold Pluto in esteem. But this concept that a massive planet is undiscovered in the outer reach of the system is plainly wrong. There are more than a hundred planets worth of mass out there. It's just that it's distributed as tiny planetesimals and asteroids. We've only specifically identified a few, but the numbers should be staggering. Tens of thousands, if not millions of small bodies out there, twisting and tilting the orbits overall. Up next, the fire simulations, specifically related to the collisions of the Milky Way over time with smaller dwarf galaxies. By using their simulations, they were able to predict where a visiting star cluster from a merged group might be. They looked, and voila, a collection of stars that was born afar, but here to stay. Welcome. Last but not least, this is M100, a pretty spiral grand design feature on the sky. By revealing gas velocity flows across the observed region, strangely plotting the velocity on the vertical and galactic space on the horizontal, it's actually what this tells them that's more important than the picture. It's interconnected, star-forming, charged gas currents, also called plasma. Folks, we've seen galaxies on a string equidistant from one another in the cosmic web, but never stars with this level of detail. Within the filament of dusty plasma, forming equal distance apart. That's not gravity and randomness. That's a wave frequency within the current flow. This concept not only points directly to the plasma cosmology, but it aids the paper we shared in last night's video. The electromagnetic galactic forces I said were so important in that video are what triggers stars like pearls on a string. Even if you don't dive deep on cosmology, check out last night's video to see exactly what's happening in the real world and in the real universe. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Our website, our books and hats, and our app are the best ways to support this program and keep these daily videos free here on YouTube. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.